Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. This is a ring gear, a brass ring gear. This thing has some weight to it, 30 pounds, probably 40 pounds. I had a customer drop this by and ask me if I could help him make a cocktail table. He's looking to make something about 24 inches tall, and he said, I don't care what you do for legs, I've got a piece of glass that's 24 inches in diameter, and I'm gonna put it over the top of this. I just need you to make some sort of legs for this thing that is about 24 inches off the ground total. So that's a challenge for me, and I love projects like this. Uh, there is, if you Google ring gear table, you will find a couple of tables with the same gear or very similar to that actually they've made some tables out of using it looks like round brass rod. Well, I'm not going to go that route. What we're going to be using is some inch and a half by quarter thick brass flat bar. I happen to have that right here. I'm going to attempt, I've got some of this, plenty of this brass rod right here. And the customer also provided me with this brass um, I think it's some part of a bearing. Uh, this is just a brass piece, and this is what we're going to utilize to help make um, you know, legs for this table as well. I'm going to probably center this someplace out here in the middle and have something go down to it and then come off it, kind of like a little 45. Probably my thought was three legs, but now I'm looking at this, I may have to go six just because of the whole configuration uh, that this gear has. Three legs is not uniformly correct. I may have to just go with six. So anyways, this is gonna be a fun project. So let's get started on today's video. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is I am going to test fit. I, I chose to use these bolts just because uh, added decor. All right, and now these are uh, three quarter inch by inch and a half bolts and they're zinc plated and I just thought it would offset this brass a little bit, maybe just give it a little something extra. So here is what I'm talking about, or here's what I'm thinking about doing, and that's getting six legs on here on an angle and taking it up to that uh, bearing housing. I think that's what that is, and uh, that's what I'm going to start with. So these are about an inch and a half long. These are going to be the tabs. I'm cutting this off right now, and then I will be welding these two pieces together as soon as I get everything cut. You know, I will say I tried to bend this off a of camera. No good. Uh, brass does not bend well, at least this thick of brass, and uh, it just didn't work out, so I chose this is what we're going to do. All right, here's these little pieces. There is a little radius there to that ring gear, and I'm just going to mark that, and I want to just grind that down so these uh, pieces fit nice and flush to that radius inside that ring gear. Taking them over the Burr King. There's not much that's coming off of this, just a very little. It's all we really need is just something like that. Um, to make that fit flush in there. Probably something I didn't have to do, but just something I wanted to do. It's just part of the detail. And right there, you can see they fit nice and snug in there. All right, this is the idea. I'm gonna weld them on there like that. And so let me get these pieces here cut. A total of six of them, and they're 12 inches long. The beauty with brass is uh, super soft, and you can see it just cuts, it cuts really nice. And I don't know, I'm in the way right here, obviously, but look at all that uh, gold dust, <laughs> brass dust. All right, so this is my little jig set up right here. This is my first go at welding brass. Uh, you know, um, I'll tell you what my settings are, and I, I struggled a lot during this whole process. I'm operating off the HTP uh, Invertig 301, and I'm running about 200 amps and I'm running about 30% CFH pure argon. 
on DC. That's what I tried to go with here. And I got to tell you, um, there is a fine line of, of heat here. If you're too cold, it doesn't happen. If you're too hot, it just explodes on you. The impurities in this brass, uh, the zinc that's in there, uh, it just pops and cracks. And so that fine line of creating a puddle uh, with brass is, is, is really, really small. And I learned that uh, uh, right away. You can see it just blowing up on me right there. Not the prettiest thing you've ever seen, uh, but uh, this um, is just gonna work and then just grinding everything down smooth. It's gonna clean that up pretty good. Now these legs worked pretty good. A little bit later on in the project, you're gonna see me really struggling. And uh, we'll talk more about that when we get there. But uh, for the leg part, uh, this works pretty good. You know, so here's the here's the next thing I'm I'm thinking about. Now, now this is just a build. I'm just doing this on my own here. You know, I'm trying to figure out as I go what how things are going to come together, how is it going to look, and how I'm going to build this thing. And uh, you know, now that I've done all this grinding and cleaning up, you obviously you're seeing that. And so now the the, the question comes: How am I going to finish this thing when I'm done with it? Well, I think I'm going to put a brush finish on it, and I think that's uh, going to make everything look pretty good. All right, over here at the uh, at the mill, the KBC mill, and uh, just uh, this is a three quarter inch hole, no pilot hole. The brass is real, is real soft, and the drill goes through there nice and smooth, and no issues at all. And then this goes on here like this, and then that's the way that's going to work, at, and I like that. So, with that said, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. So one thing that I learned about, uh, um, I believe this is called TIG brazing. I, I, I've got very little experience welding uh, brass. So TIG brazing or, 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 or welding brass, whatever it may be, definitely a learning experience. You can see that if you get it too hot, that brass just jumps off there and gets right on that tungsten. Like a, you just saw me change that tungsten out. I must have changed the tungsten on this project 10 times during this project because of this problem. And just see it just smoking and spattering and spitting so it definitely welds better in the flat position um, i had a little bit better success in the flat position like this um, than i did in the horizontal or vertical position definitely does not like that or at least i could not get it to weld uh, very good at all in the vertical and horizontal position uh, that heat just had to be exactly right and i just couldn't i just couldn't find it but Anyways, it's a learning experience, and this is what I love doing. I love learning stuff that I haven't done before, and, uh, you know, how do I get better at it? I don't know. You guys uh, do this. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what I'm doing wrong or what I did do wrong or what do I need to do in order to uh, to get better at uh, TIG raising brass here. All right, well, with, uh, with all that out of the way, uh, you know, it's coming along pretty good. <laughs> I was just I was getting ready to say you don't know what's gonna what's coming up next. It's uh, it's 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 pretty gnarly. But uh, anyway, this this round flap disc right here is pretty cool. It's great for inside corner joints. I may have mentioned that before in my other videos. Um, you know, works really nice. It's, uh, I got I picked them up on Amazon. I can't find them anywhere. I uh, I saw them on Amazon one time. I wanted to give it a try, and the things work really nice. That's where I got mine. All right, well, these things are looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy at this point so far, you know, after my first go at, uh, uh, you know, welding brass or TIG brazing or whatever you want to call it. It, uh, you know, although they weren't the prettiest thing, but by the time I got done grinding everything out, they, they shaped up pretty nice. So, so far, so good moving along on this project. All right, back over to the mill and just pop these holes in here. Like I mentioned, it's just a, it's just an aesthetic thing. Um, um, I just kind of wanted to add a little something to it. I didn't want this whole thing to be just welded brass. You know, I wanted to have a little something different on it. At least that was my thought. And since I went with these zinc bolts right here on the top, I think that just I think they're going to show through the glass real nice and just give it a little something uh, uh, rather than just all being brass. All right, there they all are. And uh, here we go. We're just going to bolt these things in. And this is the way this uh, this happens. And it is coming together pretty good so far. I'm kind of liking, liking what we got going on. And that uh, bearing housing, and that's how that's going to work. 
One thing I did notice is these bolts stick a little proud of the very bottom right there. What well, well actually is going to be the top. That glass is going to go on there. So I need to take these over the lathe and knock about an eighth of an inch off them. It was close. They were just maybe a sixteenth of an inch sticking up there, but it was enough to make it uneven. So I just uh, took all these bolts over the lathe. It took about uh, sixty thousandths a pass here. I don't know, you know, a couple, two or three passes to to bring it down. Uh, but why, by the way, that worked out pretty good. Just like that. And then uh, a little chamfer on the end to give it that bolt look. And then I'll do one more for you a little bit closer so you can see how that works. A couple passes I think I did here. You know, around 60 thousandths a pass or so. And then the chamfer. And then there we go. All right, those are back in place. And now this ring gear sits perfectly flat. That's going to be good. That glass is going to work well. All right, so how I'm handling this is, is I want to get this, uh, this bearing housing right dead center, obviously, in here. You don't want this thing to look cattywampus. So the way I thought about doing it is just this piece of 3-inch pipe. And I'm measuring all around, finding the center of this ring gear. And, you know, this, this took a little bit of time for me to get here to get this in this position right here to get it just right and i also clamped the ring gear down to the welding table i didn't want anything to move around and all these mag squares right here on all four corners to get everything uh nice and centered up and then plumbed uh, into position and there we go i'm pretty happy with that all right so i jumped ahead a little bit here obviously the ring gear is on and it is in place uh, that whole process literally took about four hours. It was insane for me to get everything centered up on that, and uh, I just, I didn't, I just couldn't film all that. But uh, I got them tacked into place. I got it where it needs to be, and then this is where the struggles begin. TIG brazing or welding brass does not work well in the in the horizontal or vertical position. I found that out. At least I couldn't get it to. I I struggled with it. There might be a way. There might be. You possibly can do it. It's not like aluminum. You know, aluminum welds well in all positions. Uh, and I thought maybe brass might do the same thing. But uh, I struggled uh, to get to get this to happen. And you can see how it just, it gets super hot and it just blows up on you, you know. And you just, there's no in-between. There's, you, you have to hit that heat range perfectly right at that exact temperature in order to create a, a puddle to make it happen. And I, there was a lot of welding on this project, and I would probably say that I might have had uh, four or five welds that I hit just right, and I was able to uh, actually get a bead on there. Um, but for the rest of it, eh, it was ugly. It's just melting, melting things together, and this is uh, why you can just see it's how ugly this is looking. So this is why I decided, okay, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to grind all this weld down as much as I can grind down to kind of just make it look the best I can at this point. And, uh, you know, there you saw me put, you see me put a little bit of beeswax on that flap disc. It's just really good. Um, it's like aluminum. Yeah, it just keeps it from loading up. This material is really soft, but does a good job. And uh, so I am grinding this down. And so, you know, all right, so things are starting to look a little bit better. I'm starting to get a little bit more hope now. And... A little bit better encouragement going on here that uh, things might uh, turn out a little bit better all right here are the six legs now and so this is what i want to do i want to have these legs come out flush to the outside of the ring gear so i've got it clamped down to my welding table right here with a vertical piece of uh this is like three inch square tube that i had sitting around and i'm just trying to get this uh nice and plumbed up and to where i'm happy with it and that's kind of what I'm doing. And I've created that little jig right there. That little jig fits right in the top. And I'm just going to rest it against that uh, uh, piece of three inch tubing right there. And then line it up with the corresponding bottom piece right there. So I'm just tacking them into place right here. This is the first one. Again, struggle, major. And I'm just going to go on around and uh, get these legs on there. Same thing just a battle i'm lining them up right there be sure everything is lined up as best i can 
Well, like I mentioned, if you guys know a better way of doing this, or maybe, uh, maybe you know, like I said, I'm on DC. I did switch to AC somewhere along this project just to see if that was going to make a difference. It didn't really. It welded very similar, uh, but I want to say it welds a little bit better on DC than AC. Uh, I was able to get them both to work, but uh, um, well, it seems like DC was the was the better choice here. The filler metal I'm using is silicon bronze. It's 330 seconds. And then uh, you can just see, I'm, you can just see, it's just, it's just a, it's just a struggle. <laughs> it's a learning process, I guess. All right, well, there they are. They look like they're somewhat in order. But the problem I'm seeing here is a little flexy. So I feel I need to get a little strap around the outside here. So over in my scrap bin here, try to find something. I did happen to have a piece of one inch by eighth inch flat bar stock, which was perfect. And I'm just marking, I'm coming down four inches off the top right here. And I'm just gonna cut some pieces that are gonna go all the way around to just give it that support because, you know, this thing is really heavy at this point. And uh, it just, those legs would just push their way out, so. This is what I'm gonna do right here. I'm gonna make a little bend and yes, yeah, just something to conform uh, to those legs. And then I've marked them a little bit. I gotta cut a little bit of an angle off right here. You'll see when I, when I test fit it right here, you'll see how it's gonna fit in there. And just like that. And then I'm gonna do all six of them the same. And there they are. All right, just clamping them in place right here. And I'm going to start by just getting a tack on here. Uh, I'm coming in right at about four inches down at the top. I want to be sure that they're all the same. And then just a tack in there. Again, I really thought this was the worst part right here. Now, I don't know if, 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 this, if this one inch piece of brass is different material or different composites than the inch and a quarter, but it, what, man, I, it was ugly. Everything about this whole welding these things in was ugly. It look it's just everything's just blown up. Super super smoky, fiery. Look at that dripping off of there. Like I said, the vertical horizontal position no good for me. I couldn't get anything to work. So I was doing it was everything I could do to just get this this metal to melt together to to hold. There's no uniformity to it. Uh, nothing and so I had to you know obviously got this all done I got in there and ground down as much as I could and kind of cleaned it up with a grinder the best I could once I got it all done yeah you can see the frustration level it would just it took a long time to get uh, to get this to get this part done. All right, well, now that I got that all done, I was actually getting this thing laid down at the side and I got a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, flat welding position in there. And actually, I gotta say this, this worked out uh, uh, much better. That's what I'm saying. I, I've definitely concluded that it, it welds the best in the flat position. All right, well, there that part of it is done. We almost got it. There's one more little added touch. It looks a little brassy, a little plain down here on the bottom. So um, I thought what I would do is just drill this out and add some more of those zinc bolts uh, to give it uh, that industrial look, if you will. A little bit uh, rustic, a little bit uh, uh, industrial look since I've got those bolts at the top. And I thought this would be a good added uh, touch uh, for at the bottom right here. 
Struggle a little bit with the big drill bit. Um, you know, brass was super soft. The drill bit was super sharp, and it just wanted to bite and just tear into that uh, brass and not go through there uh, as smooth as I'd like. But uh, I was able to work through it and and managed to get all those holes drilled out decently. I did use, like you see, see a pilot hole right there. I did go start with the pilot hole. I didn't want the big bit to wander off, so that's the way I handled that. All right, you see me change batteries. I don't know if you saw that or not, but I changed batteries there. Don't buy cheap batteries. This is an aftermarket Makita battery, and uh, I'm telling you, there are reason, there's a reason why they're cheap, price-wise, uh, because they don't last very long. This, this battery was fully charged when I put it in there, and I didn't even get three holes drilled before the battery went dead. I don't know if you can afford it. Just go with the stock original Makita batteries. I feel that that's a better way to go. All right, there it is. Everything is all drilled out. Everything is going. So now it's time to start the polishing process and getting things cleaned up and grinding down some of these nasty welds that I may have uh, had on there. And um, I'm going to go with this uh, this like, like a brush finish, I think. Uh, you know, I'm just testing everything out. Just trying to get this thing off of here. There it is. It came right off. Not too much of a problem. And so this is a. I want to say it's it's like a Scotch Bright. It's a it's a non-woven pad. I think it's like a medium. Uh, that's medium fine and coarse. And uh, this is uh, from Champion um, Cutting Tools. And. Uh, this seemed to work the best. You know, I got in there and cleaned things up. It gave it that brushed finish. I think that's kind of the look I'm going for, and especially here where I had to do a lot of grinding uh, to kind of clean those welds up a little bit. Um, you know, this helped out a lot by the time I was done with it and kind of blended it in a little bit and gave it the gave it the you know a nice a nice brushed finish. It kind of kind of blended in a lot better than what it was anyway without it. Pretty clean look. And then I just finished it up uh, with a uh, non-woven pad right here. It's just uh, uh, gave it that final scratched finish, that final clean look, brushed finished look. It, uh, that turned out pretty good. Okay, so for the wheel, same thing. I'm just going to go around and clean this thing up. I thought it, uh, it would be a good, uh, good match to the, uh, to the stand there. And it uh, that turned out pretty good as well. That cleaned up really nice and gave it that nice brush finish. That, that I like that. The gear itself was a little dirty on the very end, and so I just uh, I just took the small little the small little air grinder right here with a smaller wheel and just kind of clean things up a little bit. Watch what happens here. What do you think is going to happen? Of course, you turn it upside down, and all the bolts fall out. <laughs> oh, well. All right, there we go. And this thing kind of went right back on, just a little bit of uh, moving things around a little bit, and it fit right down in place. Uh, you know, I thought maybe it might spring a little bit when I took everything off, but no, it stayed in position fairly well. All right, this is just the final assembly right here. And I'm just going to hit these uh, with an impact wrench right here and tighten them up a little bit. And then this is the top. And, of course, obviously, this is all welded together. This is just decor just to give it that uh, a little something different. All right. There it is. And I got to say, there was a lot of work that went into this. Uh, and this thing turned out okay. It... Uh, I think it's going to serve its purpose. I think the customer is going to be very happy. In fact, I know the customer is happy. And uh, anyways, it was a fun little project right here. And if you guys have any kind of help with uh, TIG brazing or welding brass, so let me know in the comment section. I'm always eager to learn. 
And there it is, complete with the glass on it and a couple of uh, beverages on it as well. Nice little conversational piece, nice piece of furniture. I think it was a fun build. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.